One of the things I'm most excited about this research is this opportunity to really connect how genetics, physiology, the environment that the fish experiences during its development uh, for multiple populations across a, a large gradient from desert streams all the way up to cold montane streams that are actually too cold for those fish to perform at their, their best. How um, those genes and rearing environment interact to affect the physiology and the behavior and the survival of those fish and to get that information so we can combine it in models that integrate from genes all the way up to landscapes and how uh, humans interact with uh, the social systems of humans interact with those landscapes to affect the distribution of, of really this iconic species that lots of people love and is a part of, of Idaho's natural heritage. We chose this facility because it is a really excellent aquaculture facility, so it has all of the infrastructure to be able to uh, run a common garden. It's located in a part of the state that's um, sort of the most central to the study populations uh, from the desert populations and then some of the montane populations. The site is also the location of the, it's, it's co-managed by the uh, Columbia River Intertribal Fisheries Commission and some of our key collaborators are located here at the site as well. So I'm helping coordinate the uh, experiments here at Hagerman and it, my specific roles are I've been helping collect fish from the field, from the field populations particularly in the northern part of the state near the University of Idaho and Moscow. And, um, We've been collecting those fish. We've also been uh, collecting temperature information so we can understand the natural um, temperature regimes in those streams. And I'm helping advise uh, students and postdocs in their projects examining physiology and behavior and the genetics of those individual populations um, as they are grown in different thermal environments. So this research that we're doing is uh, extremely interesting to me personally as a physiologist because I'm able to take um, my background and my experience and apply that to a new system. So for me, most of my career has been in aquaculture. Um, now with this project, I'm utilizing those tools to address an ecological uh, issue and, and applying the aquaculture skills in terms of rearing the fish in the common garden, but also my physiological skills to answer these ecological questions. Um, so we're able to utilize things like to do respirometry, um, uh, gene expression, RNA-seq, all things that, all, all tools that I have experience with and apply them specifically to this project. For me, this project has um, some excellent science, but, but really what, what it brings to the table that really excites me is the, the cooperation with the stakeholders, um, with partners across the state. Um, while EBSCOR by, by nature involves the, the, all the state universities here in Idaho. So I'm doing a physiology experiment trying to understand the, how the fish adapted to different environment across different organization levels. There are a couple of experiments we have designed to study the adaptation of red band trout. One is the critical thermal maximum, which is an experiment to find out what's the highest temperature the red band trout can tolerate. We also look at the swimming performances, also the organ level, the cardiac function, and the metabolic rate, something like that. These fish are a big part of other components of the environment, like the sagebrush project. It's, it's no coincidence that the Gem 3 is also studying sagebrush. You know, they, they, have, um, they have patterns of, of spawning and they rely off of each other uh, to have a functioning ecosystem. And that affects us too. My expertise is on the um, maximum cardiac output of the red band trout under hypoxic and thermal stress. Um, and that is going towards um, some environmental and ecological questions that we have for the red band trout and modeling for the future. And as um, 
streams heat up, we want to know what they can handle and if they're going to uh, be extirpated or if they're going to be able to adapt um, to rising stream temperatures. The research that's going on right now, my part in it is I'm working with the Common Garden Experiment on the EPSCoR GEM3 project and we're trying to find differences between um, populations of red band trout that are in different environments, bringing them into a common garden and exposing them to different temperature treatments. The experiments I'm currently running are temperature preference, where I have a chamber that automatically detects where a fish is and allows it to choose its own temperature and it uses tracking software allowing the fish to actually adjust the temperature depending on where it is actually at in um, the chamber. We are really excited to have the support of NSF to be able to uh, have the opportunity to train students, to build the capacity of facilities like Hagerman, to build the capacity of um, the University of Idaho and the other research universities in Idaho, to interact and engage with the traditional undergraduate institutions, and really without the support of NSF, we would not be able to undertake um, the novel elements of this research, which are really being able to do a common garden at this scale. So common garden experiments have been done in multiple places, but it's often a few populations. Um, to be able to do this across uh, the, the landscape of all of the state of Idaho is a really unique opportunity. And then the really big, uh, Thing that we're really excited about is be able to take those data from the genotyping from the common gardens and um, landscape mapping and model mapping and combine all those into models that help us to understand the ecology behavior evolution and uh, ability of those populations to persist in a management relevant and conservation relevant context.